Attention digital nomads. Do you need a notary? The shop co-working space has you covered. With a community team of registered notaries, they can help you check that task off your list anytime during business hours. You can even book ahead. Take a virtual tour of the shop's beautiful co-working space at shopworkspace.com. And if you want to try it out for a day, just bring seven pantry items for their food drive. You'll get a day pass in exchange. Here's what Salt Lake's talking about. The Millers have officially broken ground on the new Salt Lake Bees baseball stadium in Daybreak. And if you're wondering what the heck Daybreak is, it is a 4,000-acre master-planned community in South Jordan, about 30 minutes southwest of Salt Lake City. But don't be so hard on yourself, because I think we're all kind of wondering what the heck Daybreak is. Salt Lakers can be very judgmental of the suburbs, but are we totally off course? It's Thursday, November 16th. I'm Ali Vallarta, and this is CityCast Salt Lake. Samora Magadla, you fairly recently won the lottery and decided to buy a house. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Ali. Now, you are a flight attendant. You've been doing that for a while. You yes. are a queer black man. You have seen the world, and you decided the place that you wanted to buy a house was Daybreak, Utah. Can you walk me through this decision? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Let me preface by saying I was not always the biggest fan of Daybreak. I was living in South Salt Lake, mm-hmm. and I remember my realtor in the process of looking for housing or looking to buy a house said, listen, let's get you out to daybreak. As a flight attendant, I know you are always out and on the go and you've talked to me a little bit about how you enjoy the walkability of all the different cities that you visit. And I want to show you daybreak. And so she took me out there and said, I think there's a place for you. And here we are. (laughs) A skeptic turned... Um, sold homeowner in Daybreak. Could not have seen coming the fact that how cosmopolitan you are is the reason you chose Daybreak. (laughs) I, yes, so true. I never thought about Daybreak, this very walkable city with resources like groceries, bars, Mm -hmm. trails, literally within 10 to 15 minutes from my doorstep. Actually shorter, but yeah, I I was like, this this is like all the cities that I love when I go to work and travel and I'm actually living in it, so. Hmm. Well, so the state of Utah recently did a survey about growth. And yes. what the survey showed is that 56% of urban Utahns want to have these kinds of housing options. Like they are interested in planned communities. Does that surprise you? No, I believe many transplants and also people, local natives who live here, love that about the city. It's something that they rave about. They rave about the idea of being able to hit up, you know, these amazing trails and amazing nature. And I think that that is kind of like the center, the core of these planned communities, this ability to be able to be within proximity to not only your home, but these amenities that we enjoy around our home. And that's nature and that's communal spaces that we can come together and really just enjoy as a community. Yeah. I mean, what you're describing is the idea of a 15 minute city, which is funny because it's an idea that's become like in terms of national politics, politically divisive. Like there are people who think a 15 minute city is a threat. And yet... Utahns are asking for it. So true. I think, especially with everything that's going on, right? Um, Growth that you've mentioned and the issues that sometimes come up with that. Pollution, driving, um, traffic, and something that we've consistently year after year had to address here in the Valley, right? Like inversion. And so 
planned cities in Utah, I can see are popular because it eliminates this ability to have to drive and to, you know, commute and be sitting in traffic. You pretty much get to bike, you get to walk, you get to um, take a scooter to the things that you love. Yeah. Okay. Well, one of the reasons I'm excited to talk to you is because I think a lot of salt, quote unquote, salt lakers misunderstand daybreak. This is a realization I've been slowly coming to and my friendship with you catalyzed it. (laughs) The stereotype, of course, from where we sit in the capital city is it's a conservative, uptight, cookie cutter community in the middle of nowhere. What are some of the misconceptions? You know, okay, so I was one of those people. I lived in South Salt Lake. And I was like, who goes down to daybreak? (laughs) Like, who lives out there? Um, And I honestly believe daybreak is in its renaissance era. It is redefining itself from that image. And you have a lot of people who have lived in Salt Lake and are like, you know what? I love the city, but I also want to live in a suburb where I have access to trails and I have access to my, you know, favorite grocery stores and community centers that just don't exist in Salt Lake City because, right, they're building all these huge apartments that are very expensive and inaccessible. Um, I love Daybreak because, yeah, it's really kind of come around and tried to kind of change That identity of the cookie cutter. I think one example can be of this past Halloween. I mean, everybody who is familiar with Utah and Daybreak knew about Barbie Land. They knew about Halloween. And the community was like, anywhere you walked, they said, this is what we want. We want people to see that we are varied in our personalities. We love the idea of seeing people and having people enjoy our trails and enjoy our spaces. And I think... That really changed my misconception. Um, Mm. People being more welcoming than I had initially thought myself. And I think that's going to be kind of the daybreak that we see moving forward. People who really want people to come out here and see just how amazing a community the space is. Hmm. Okay. I mean, you brought up affordability and the fact that like, if you want to live within walking distance of a Harmon's or fun coffee shops or bars in Salt Lake, it's going to be, I mean, especially if we're talking about buying, out of reach for a lot of people. Is Daybreak affordable? Oh my gosh. That's a hard question. I mean, because affordability looks so different for so many different people. And as we started this story, I stumbled upon luck (laughs) that allowed me to secure um, a house in this crazy market. If I didn't have that, I would say no. And I think that is the case of all Utah. That is not just Daybreak Salt Lake. That's Northern Salt Lake. That's Salt Lake County. Yeah. Okay. Is there nightlife? (laughs) I am an old broad. (laughs) I turn down at like, eight o'clock. Um, I have been in touch with so many of my neighbors who are new here, and we've had so many great conversations about the nightlife that is to be coming, especially with the B Stadium and the new development of downtown Daybreak as that B Stadium comes. There is only one bar, The Break, that is within proximity to me. Great place. Mm-hmm. Um, enjoy it and have enjoyed taking friends there. But Again, I'm of the age where I am pretty much done by, like, the day, especially during daylight savings time, like, sundown. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But, yes, there is stuff out here um, for everybody. And you have to definitely go search for it. And for some, you might have to commute to get to that. But the city is constantly planning stuff for residents living here. And I really do appreciate that. Well, Let's talk about the residents, because in terms of demographics, I think the stereotype is a daybreak resident is a nuclear family unit, potentially members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, probably white, probably heterosexual, maybe one or two kids, like kind of Pleasantville. Is that what your neighbors are like? Yes. And no, I mean, they, like I said, 
Daybreak is kind of in this Renaissance era, as much as I think Salt Lake County as a whole is. And especially where I live, there's definitely an influx of people coming from different parts of the country trying to kind of reestablish a new way of life. Um, Yes, there is going to be all that you have mentioned, but I've also seen more. Um, They do make a huge demographic, and that's more because they've been here the longest. But I'd be interested to say that could very well change in the next five to ten years, just because... Again, I think Daybreak is really excited, at least from what I've seen in the short time that I've been here, um, to bring in new blood and new ways of thought into the neighborhood. And so, yeah. (laughs) Well, I feel like in the like kind of 80s, 90s and into the aughts, it was more and more common for urban areas to have a gayborhood, like a district or a neighborhood where a lot of either gay couples or gay individuals lived, mostly as a result of racism segregation. But thinking about how that idea has evolved, I have heard chatter, both on like Reddit and in the community, that Daybreak is an evolving gayborhood. Is that in its future? (laughs) It is. It's oftentimes referred to as gay break. Um, Mm -hmm. When I was actively involved in volunteering prior to moving out here with Project Rainbow, it was crazy to like see in the most positive ways how many gay LGBTQ identifying people lived out here. And I think that many people, especially of the community, are really like enticed by the growing network of LGBTQ people living out here and the acceptance that exists out here. I feel like I can be who I am and um, all my Black queerness and I'm not getting the stares I used to get when I was younger walking into certain neighborhoods. It's definitely, it feels accepting as much as someone like myself, Black queer can in Utah. (laughs) Hey, Salt Lake. I know a lot of podcasts are trying to sell you mattresses in a box, but I'm sorry, no. If I'm going to spend 50 hours a week laying on something, I've got to try it first. So I'm going hard for Mattress Warehouse. Shop a locally owned store and still access all the top brands. Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, Purple, Serta. These are the icons of sleep, and I'm relaxed just thinking about them. With seven locations along the Wasatch Front, it's easy to pop in and let them custom fit you to a mattress. Because let's be honest, a good sleep foreshadows a great day. Mattress Warehouse offers interest-free financing and a comfort guarantee. In November, everything will be on sale and you can save up to a grand on Black Friday. Tell them we sent you and get a free pillow with your purchase. Find the location nearest you at mattresswarehouseutah.com. Hey, Salt Lake. If you've ever wondered if you can pull off cowboy boots, you should pull on a pair of Tacovas this fall. With a new store open right here in Salt Lake City, it's never been easier to get fitted into a great pair of boots, and you'll enjoy them for years to come. Let me tell you how Tacovas are made. Each pair of boots is crafted by hand in over 200 individual steps. They use premium bovine and exotic hides, and they're designed not just for style, but for comfort. Step into Tacova's City Creek store and you'll be greeted with a friendly smile and the rich aroma of fine leather. The Salt Lake store offers complimentary boot shines and custom leather stamping to make your new boots future heirlooms that can be passed down for generations. Head over to City Creek, step into a new pair of Tacovas, and don't go gently. All right, Utahns, here is the deal. This year, our election day is different from the rest of the country. Election day in Utah is Tuesday, November 21st. That's the Tuesday right before Thanksgiving. 
Why have the dates changed? Honestly, it's complicated. I'm not going to get into it. Trust me, it's fine. Here's what you need to know. To vote, you need to be registered, which you can do at vote.utah.gov by Monday, November 13th. If you vote by mail, you must postmark your ballot on or before Monday, November 20th. Or you can drop your ballot off at your county clerk's office, at a polling location, or at a drop box by 8 p.m. on Election Day, which again, this year, is Tuesday, November 21st. If you prefer to vote in person, you can find your nearest polling location at vote.utah.gov. So please, make a plan to vote local this fall. Remember to mail your ballot by November 20th and find everything you need to know about elections at vote.utah.gov. Well, you mentioned Barbie Land. I mean, Daybreak's been making national headlines. Also, the new home, as you mentioned, of the Salt Lake Bees, which we are quite bitter about, which I think is another impetus for this conversation, because, Samora, I just need you to convince me that I should be going to Daybreak to see the bees. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you have a place to crash. That's um, so true. For every game. So I literally can see the stadium outside my balcony. So if anything, you take the tracks out here. I'll have a cold one waiting for you in the fridge. (laughs) And you don't have to wait in line at the stadium for all of that. I will even go to Costco and get snacks so you don't even have to wait in line for the hot dogs, popcorn. I hope that sells you to come out here. (laughs) Wow, I am so sold. Okay, so thinking about what, maybe not just what Daybreak is taking from Salt Lake, But what Salt Lake can be taking from daybreak, what are some of the lessons? Because you used to live up here. Yeah. I think where daybreak is thriving and where Salt Lake can take notes is creating communal spaces. I think as humans, as creature of habit, we love to engage. We, as much as sometimes we say, I'm an introvert, I do not like, the idea of me walking with my realtor and getting a sense of familiarity with just her saying, let's see how many people say hello. Let's see how many people you cross paths with who smile. I was like, oh my gosh, like this feels so great because in my day-to-day life, I'm smiling, I'm crossing paths with complete strangers, um, and it, be it with work or be it just, you know, at the store. And so I feel like Daybreak really has succeeded in that. Their homes are built in such a way where no matter where you walk, you're going to see somebody on a balcony. You're going to see somebody on their front porch. Daybreak doesn't have a lot of like backyards where in like Salt Lake, homes have backyards and you can literally spend an entire year without seeing your neighbors. Daybreak said, we want to change that and we want to create a space where no matter where you walk, you're going to see people on the paths, on your way to work, on your, like, you will be in constant interaction with people. And I love that. And it brings the idea of suburban engagement to a whole new, like, level. Like, I'm like, holy crap, they really did build this community. So you see people, your, your garage is tucked away. It's not, like, in the front of the house, go, don't see anybody. Um, that's where the balcony is. That's where the stairs to the front. And that's just how Daybreak's built. It's crazy. Okay, I'm falling out of my chair right now because what you are describing is density. And the idea that you had to leave Salt Lake City, the capital city, yeah. to find it <laughs> is like <laughs> upsetting to me. Like it's heartbreaking to me. Like what you're describing is what it should feel like to live in any city, right? And yeah. like it's interesting because the idea of like giving up your some of your yard, the idea of like getting used to your sidewalk being busier. Like these are things that in Salt Lake neighborhoods, people are I feel like not all people and less and less people every day are resistant to. Yeah. And so to hear you describe that as the beauty of this planned community in, you know, a bedroom community of the capital city is a little mind blowing. Yeah, I was shocked. I think it wasn't until my realtor brought that to my attention on our little stroll around the city. It was like, yeah, this is 
This is what makes Daybreak so special, is that you will consistently be seeing people at any given point in time. And I love that. I used to think I was going to hate that, but as the extrovert that I am, it's like chicken soup for the soul. Okay, Samora for mayor of Daybreak. But (laughs) nobody's perfect. What are the cons? Give it to me. Oh, my gosh. You know, uh, it's so hard, but I think one of the cons... I would say is my fears of overgrowth and over like population of these very popular spaces. Um, You look at what's happening, like say in Vineyard, which they want to do Utah City and how they want to build skyscrapers and increase traffic and obviously increase the price of living. And that's obviously something on many residents' minds, no matter where you live. Like how is this going to impact the cost of living, um, you know, you hear what happened in Silicon Valley. It kind of started in the same way where it was a planned city for tech. And now it's become almost unaffordable to anybody outside the 1%. And that, that's definitely scary. That is, I think, the only con I can really think of. But outside of that, I love it. Well, and I think people might argue that Daybreak is attractive to tech workers. Like that yeah. is probably one of the reasons that it feels like politically, culturally, it's shifting too. Because mm-hmm. you're close to Utah County. If you're commuting there, you're close to Silicon Slopes. Um, you've got a little bit of space. You're close to the canyons. I mean, I I love to look at precinct data from elections because I'm mm-hmm. a nerd. And <laughs> I mean, Daybreak voted for Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. <laughs> you know, like politically, it's also more left than surrounding areas. And you wonder if that's also tech fluence. Yes. Oh, 100 percent. And it's a conversation I've been consistently tapped into. And, you know, Time will only tell, especially with all the growth that's happening down here. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really interested to see what will happen. Um, I for sure don't want my HOA to go up, but. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's an HOA fee. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, you mentioned Utah City. I'm becoming obsessed with new cities and planned communities and this kind of like desire to start over. Um, like this idea that what we're doing in Daybreak is what we could be doing here in Salt Lake to make it more attractive for young people. Um, But we are seeing a lot of investment popping up in the South Valley, not just Daybreak, but now The Point, Utah City. And there was this story in the Daily Herald about Utah City. And there was a quote from one of, I think it was one of the developers or one of the funders of the project, which is basically like this, I mean, they're basically turning Vineyard into this like sort of downtown metropolis. It's hard to know what right. it's actually going to look like because we only have mock-ups and they're, they're very seductive, right? Um, but this quote is, and I want you to react to it. Okay. The, the quote is, there will be homes for billionaires and affordable housing for kids now living in their parents' basements. It will be a mixed-use environment. All will be welcome, but it may not be for everyone. (laughs) Who do you think Daybreak is for? I mean, if this is the kind of ethos of the developers, how do you feel about that? It definitely puts a pit in my stomach. It really does, because developers are pouring hundreds and millions of dollars into these, you know, seductive cities. But it really appeals to, again, the people who will be able to afford that. And unfortunately, wages are not increasing, but the cost of living is. And I feel, especially with that statement, if you're not part of the 1%, (laughs) this might not be for you. I feel like the language behind that is very cryptic. And I, I just think that that statement doesn't yield this idea of come one, come all. I mean, when you say something like all will be welcome, but it may not be for everyone, I think the implication is that you're not going to do the work to make it for everyone. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a hashtagable moment. (laughs) (laughs) Well, the good news is you own now, so your mortgage stays the same. (laughs) Yeah. But I want everybody to have the same experience. I think that everybody should have 
ownership of a space that they can curate to their own liking. And it still hurts my heart because I have so many people in my circle who just can't or have had to leave the beautiful state of Utah to attain that. And it wasn't in their bingo cards. It just happened to be the circumstance of the situation. So yeah, I want to be happy, but then the part of me is like, can I be happy knowing that the people I love can't be have the same level of happiness? And you know me, I've always been of the egalitarian mindset that everybody deserves to have a space that they again can curate. Yeah. I mean, you literally won the lottery. And, <laughs> and I want that for everybody. That's right. <laughs> Samora for, for mayor of Daybreak. Let's all win the lottery. Oh, man. <laughs> Samora Magadla, you are always so generous in sharing your stories with us. Thank oh. you. And congrats on your new home. Thank you so much. I can't wait to host you at the first Bees game. It's going to be a riot. Something I cannot believe Samora didn't mention is that you can take the tracks to Daybreak. It doesn't take much longer on the red line than it does in a car, especially in traffic. So, yeah, we can totally still go watch the bees, right, guys? I don't know. I'm working through it. That is all for us today here on CityCast Salt Lake. We will be back tomorrow morning with more from around this city. Bye. Bye.